gave him the creator that, you know, that the destiny of the universe. And I'm very excited for everyone to come to our Monday evening service. This is a dream that God placed in my heart back in April 27. And I'm learning, you know, I'm new and I'm learning, you know, the growth about, you know, just sharing Jesus and you know, just the love, the compassion. You know, the Bible says in Psalms 127, that it says that God's love in a broken heart and crushed spirit. And those of you who are tuning in live on the online service, welcome. Welcome everyone to Life Purpose Bible Study. Um, to give you a little recap, that the past several weeks I've been talking about a series on purpose. You know, the purpose is so dear to my heart. I remember when I was struggling with surgery and having scoliosis, I was hearing aid and illegally blind and and I always knew when I was in Negro High School, right? I want to know my purpose. What is my purpose when I surrendered my life to Jesus when I was 17 years old? Right. And man, you know, I've been walking with the Lord for 12 years. It could be 13 years this Friday, May 22nd. Yeah. 13 years, I continue to be faithful. I continue to, to pursue the calling, what God has for me. And everybody that hit life, you know, let's say a special thank you to our, our worship man, um, a heart after God on heart, Manny Martinez, coming out here to McAllen. Thank you, Manny, just for bringing the, the gift of worship, you know, here to the service. We really appreciate it. We also got the man, the legend, behind the camera, Jermaine. Jermaine, we love you, man. I thank you for coming out here as well. Oh, uh, God bless you guys. I want to go on a word of prayer before I start my message. My loving Heavenly Father, Jesus, you continue to place your hands. You continue to work behind the scenes to, to paint a picture, to create something so beautiful, Father. Your words are just so precious, Father. Yes. Father, when I preach the message this evening, Father, that everyone that is online or you are here in the service, Father, I want this message to touch you. I want this message to, to speak to you, to know that you have a purpose and a destiny. And, and, and I declare in Jesus' name, amen. amen. You, guys, you guys can go ahead and take your seat. Amen. You know, I'm just very excited to be here today. Um, as you guys know, we meet every Monday at 7 p.m. I want to say thank you for the, the Salazar family uh, for, for donating the, the church to for, for allow us to have service today. And as you guys know, we've been doing uh, a series the past for a couple of weeks. Today, I want to close our series. I want to talk about four ways to recognizing God's voice. Uh, have you ever been curious, you know, how God's voice sounds? You know, the echo, you know, you know, the, you know, the horizon. Have you ever been curious? You know, throughout the Bible, you see throughout the Old Testament, you see how how God speaks to, to Noah, how God speaks to Abraham, how God speaks to Elijah, how God speaks to um, Hosea, all be prophets, but yet even in our own walk with Jesus, why are you wondering, how does that boy sound like, believe it or not, that God speaks to you every day. He talks to you when you're going through a, a moment of weakness, he talks to you when you go through a moment of struggle or anger or, you know, rebellion or just you felt rejected, you feel alone. But um, I want to talk about this message. I want to share four points and to recognizing God's voice for your life. And believe it or not, that he does talk to you. You know, God, he whispered into your heart. You know, I like how the Bible says when Jesus said that I'm not going to leave you alone, but I'll send you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will guide you. The Holy Spirit will give you conviction. The Holy Spirit will, will talk to you. So, uh, as we are believers in Christ, we learn to listen. We learn to, you know, be obedient. We learn to, to be, you know, sincere to the voice of God. And one of the, the stories that inspired me when I was reading it in 1 Samuel chapter 3, it uh, talked about a man named Samuel. Samuel was just laying down. And, and, and then many times that when God speaks to Samuel, Samuel, when, 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 uh, when, when Samuel woke up, he ran to, the, to Eli, here I am, here I am. When Eli said, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't call you, I didn't call you, go, sit, go, go back and lay down to 
the bed, they call you, they want Samuel, he he rush, lay down, he continue hearing the echo of the boy, Samuel. Then when Samuel woke up, he ran to the prophet Eli, and then he said to Eli, here I am, here I am. But then when Eli said, son, Samuel, I didn't call you. Go, lay down, go back to sleep. And then um, what happened, young people, when Samuel lay down, he, he learned to listen. And then the, the, the Bible says that, that in, in verse 10, and then when, when God spoke to Samuel, Samuel! And I like what he said, when Samuel respond, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. But young people, as we believe in Christ, when we surrender our, our life to Jesus, we are servants, we are followers, we are disciples. We, 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 we do not follow the, the way of the world, but yet we follow Jesus. I want to share a more powerful point. Now, one of the stories I like, is one of my personal favorite stories in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, it talks about a shepherd. It talks about a shepherd that he called upon the sheep. And the sheep listened, and they, they, they learned his voice, they followed him. And uh, it's so amazing, I'm going to ask uh, Priscilla to read John, chapter 10, verse two to five. John 10, verses 2 to 5. The one who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. The doorkeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all his own outside, he goes ahead of them. The sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. They will never follow a stranger. Instead, they will run away from him because they don't recognize the voice of strangers. Amen. You know, this is something that I learned in my home life that Jesus is a good shepherd. Every one of you are like a flock. Every one of you is a sheep. We need to learn to listen to the voice of God. We need to learn to, to, to listen to that voice, young people, because there's time that the enemy will come to steal, kill, and destroy. The enemy will, will, will speak lies. The enemy will speak discouragement. He'll speak, you know, a way to keep you away from your destiny. Or a brother, a 
person's going to cry. It's all you can talk to to get a word of encouragement or get from, you know, get your heart full, you know, of the spirit. And uh, many times you might feel empty. You might feel, you know, distant. You know, you might feel alone, you know, but yet this is a time that when, when, when we fill our heart with God's word. And, uh, now, this is something that I learned in my journey. Um, uh, God's word will never contradict God's, uh, I'm so sorry, guys, uh, I'm trying to see. Uh, God's word will never contradict God's word. God's word is viable. God's word has power. God's word has a strength and to help you. Now we'll go to point, um, point number Oh, no, um, if you can read Romans chapter 12 verse 2, you can set up. 12 2? Romans 12 verse 2. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is a good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Amen. Do not conform to the pattern of the world. We must be different. We must be you know, um, from fear of our heart, but God calls you out not to, for you not to be, you know, going with the crowd, because yet young people, he talk to you every day. I want to continue uh, to go to another point. I like this message, that was so dear to my heart. Uh, point number two. Do you, do you sense the Holy Spirit leading you? Do you sense the Holy Spirit leading you? Did you know that in life you have choices? In life you make decisions every day. Now, one of the things that I, I talk to a lot of seniors, you know, they always ask me, you know, what, what, what do I go, Pastor, when I leave high school? Do I go to college? Or do I continue going to, you know, work and career? Or continue my education? Or what do I do? Uh, and one of my advice I give them, do you feel the Holy Spirit leading you? Do you feel, you know, um, positive? Do you feel strong enough to go to that direction in life? Do you feel the Spirit is talking to you to go in that direction? I remember, um, I used to work at Gaddy Pizza back in 2015, you know, when I did the bumper cars. And I, I, every time when I did the bumper car, I have kids going in, they're going to the bumper car, and I, I, all the time I'm always praying. I'm always talking to God, God, what do you want me to go on this journey? What do you want me to do in life? Because I, I did not feel peace. I, not, I didn't feel what I was doing. I wanted to do something different. And God spoke to me, leave Daddy Pizza. Stop making good money. Leave <laughs> Daddy Pizza. <laughs> Oh, I talked to my boss, my manager, you know, I want to leave Gaddy Pizza. I feel that I want to go to another, you know, calling in my life and become another the manager. Say, Jared, we want you, man. You know, you know we love you at the bottle card. The kids love you, man. Like, three best day, day, you know, we will love you. Okay, so I love the bottle card at Gaddy Pizza, but, you know, I feel that the spirit is leading me to move somewhere else. Oh, I left Gaddy Pizza, but now I've been doing full time ministry with you connection. You want to one, I have opportunity to travel, to speak in different schools and churches, and I continue to share Jesus. And now I've got a job working for the Cali and ISD, it's a fun job. And now I continue to share Jesus. Now I become a field shop advisor. Now I share Jesus to the football players, all my athletic departments, you know, middle school kids. I, uh, now I can share Jesus. Uh, recently I talked to the, the soccer player girl on Barbie game. But you know why? I listen to the spirit. I want all I'm working at. Gaddy people doing bumper car, boom, boom. And then the spirit <laughs> t- told me to leave that job because I felt led by the spirit. I, I shouldn't have to stay working at Gaddy people, but yet the spirit told me to move on because I was listening to that voice. That voice told me to, to leave that job. But I left. I want to have to sit up to read that scripture. Um, um, verses 6 through 7. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia and were prevented by the Holy Spirit from speaking the message in Asia. When they came to Mysia, 
they tried to go into Bithynia, but the spirit of Jesus did not allow them. You know, whenever you read in the book of Acts, even throughout the, the book of Acts, you always see how, that, you know, on the beginning of chapter 1, you see how Jesus um, defended, because that time uh, when John and Peter, they're trying to find a disciple to fill in the gap after Judah, you know, and then they found another disciple. But the but, but, but point is about the story of people, that did you know that God can close doors? Did you know that, that God can close doors to keep you safe? to keep you, you know, away from, you know, trouble, away from, you know, destruction. I know in my own life when, when I was 19 years old and I wanted to go, you know, to school. I wanted to go to South Texas College. I wanted to do my education. And I did everything from application and did everything. But I never got a letter. I knew that God closed that, that door and I was working at McDonald's. I wanted to do something. And, and then I remember, and when I was 19 years old and I was like, school like 10 years ago, God spoke to me to send Bible scriptures. Well, now I listen to the point that God helped me to send Bible scriptures every day. Because why? The Spirit will protect you. The Spirit will, 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 will keep you away from danger, will keep you away from, you know, things that, that is not going to help you in your journey. It might be relationship, it might be family, it might be, you know, places. You know, even when God can protect you, maybe you have a friend that is it, very, it, uh, or, discourage you, might put you down, might keep you away, but yet you got to listen to the spirit. No, the spirit is leading you. Because the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20, walk with the wise who become wise. First Corinthians 15 33, do not be misled that that company will corrupt good character. Amen. I want to have uh, Priscilla to read first John chapter 4 verse 1. Thank you for that. First John chapter 4 verse 1. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to determine if they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Amen. So, whatever you guys are right now, I know um, enemy, you know, you always want to come, kill, kill, and destroy, but we got to test the spirits. You gotta talk, you gotta be a listener, you gotta be a learner, you gotta walk with him. Just like what we talked about in John chapter 10 about the sheep. When the sheep listen to the boy, to be a shepherd, they follow a shepherd, they run away from a stranger. Now, um, many times that in, in my early 20s, I used to struggle a lot with TV shows. And uh, like, uh, at that time, I used to flip the channel and I see cartoons, and I'm like, uh, I don't like this cartoon, I don't like this profanity. But that's why I got, you know, I got to guard my heart. You know, the Bible says that um, our, 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 our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Even Jesus said that well, what do you, that you, that you see, you know, see, you bring light, your body will be, will be in light. But uh, we got to be wise to test the spirit. Now I want to continue reading. So we talk about, um, point number two, we talk about do you sense the Holy Spirit leading you and point number one, um, yeah, point number one does it does it lines up with God's word. Now uh, let's go to uh, point number three. Do other godly people uh, agree? Do other other godly people agree? Now it's very important. If you're a follower of Jesus, it's very good to have to talk to people that can give you advice, can give you wisdom. Like me, I'm 30 years old. But yeah, I do talk to, you know, like Pastor Rudy, my mom and pastor. I can talk to a brother in Christ. I can talk to like a, an elderly person. But they've been in that journey. They've been in that shoe. It's a very important for me. When I have decisions to make, I have choice, you know, I'm struggling with a decision or I'm struggling with a choice. But I always call my pastor or I always call my close friend because they can give you the wisdom. They can give you the knowledge that you need to, to help you. And uh, it is Priscilla, if you can read uh, that Proverbs, um, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. Proverbs 12, verse 15. A fool's way is right in his own eyes, but whoever listens to counsel is wise. Amen. 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 Amen.
Proverbs 15, 22. Plans fail when there is no counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. Amen. Amen. With many advisors you will succeed. You know, do not be afraid. Do not be, you know, discouraged. There's nothing wrong to seek help. There's nothing wrong to, to find someone that you can put your trust in, like a mentor, a friend, a pastor, a family member, that person can speak light into you. Now, I remember in my early 20s, you know, um, I, I struggled a lot, you know, that feeling rejected, you know, feeling like that no one even accepted me, you know. Um, I used to go to a lot of so many different youth groups. I used to go, I, I hang out with a lot of, you know, I, I want to be my struggle with, I shouldn't be a lot, you know, you know, you know, I would feel rejected, man. Like, I'm having a hard time talking to people, making conversations. And Eli said, Matt, he said, give me a lot of scripture. He said, Jerry, the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, you know, um, number 5 and 6, you know, to let you talk to the Lord, you know, um, acknowledge him, he will direct your path. You know, so I learned that, that scripture because now I, I, now I learned that now uh, we need to speak life. Because our tongue, it can bring life or death. But yet, it's important to be like, did you know that the most powerful weapon is our words? Now, you know, I, I learned that because did you know that you, know, you speak like a, an encouragement word to form life? Hey, hey how, how are you? You look good today. You look know, awful, you look awesome, nice. Because you, know, you can speak life. Now, if you speak discouragement, you, know, you, say, to, you say something bad to that person, it will affect that person. Did you know that statistics? All over the nation, they're bullying, they're, they're, they're suicidal because they were, uh, I heard in the news, there was an incident about a little boy, seventh grade boy, who became bullied, getting picked on, he died, they're speaking words of discouragement, they're speaking ugly to him, they were just talking, you know, very bad to him. That boy committed suicide. And young people, that, as you guys know, we need to learn to speak life. We need to learn to speak encouragement. Give word of encouragement to, to your brother in Christ. Give word of encouragement to, you know, to a lot of people to know God always speak life to you. God always speak word of encouragement to you. The Bible, Joshua chapter one, verse nine, be strong. Be courageous, don't just say yourself. The Lord and God will be going. That's not kind of Joshua was leading the Israelites after Moses died, but yet he took Israelites to the promised land. Amen. Now I want to go to my fourth point. My fourth point. Um, do I have peace? Do I have peace? Ask yourself a question. Do you have peace? It's so, it, it's so, it just, it's everywhere. There's so many people that, you, know, you talk to people that they feel anxiety, they feel stress, they feel worried, they feel like, you know, they can't, you know, find peace in their heart, they can't sleep at night, they can't, you know, not, they can, can't take on the pressure, but do you feel peace? The Bible says in John 14, 27, peace that I leave with you. Not with the world gave in my peace. Let not your heart be troubled, and not let it be afraid. So he will give you peace. He will give you, you know, love, and he will protect you. He will help you, he will guide you, because we need that peace in our life. The Bible says in John 16, 33, in this world, you have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Now I'm gonna go, I wanna ask Priscilla, uh, if she can read Psalm chapter 34, verse 14. Psalms chapter 34, verse 14. Turn away from evil and do what is good. Seek peace and pursue it. Amen, seek peace and pursue it. I want, to, I want to challenge everyone today to find peace. You know, maybe you can, you can find peace, you know, just 